I'll start the second half of the session. So, and uh, my name is, uh, this is Shuichi Onami again. So, and uh, I will chair the second, uh, the two uh, talk of the second half of this session. So, and the uh, uh, first speaker in the second half of the, this session is uh, uh, Dr. Stephanie Welcome Peter. So I hope I can uh, pronounce uh, properly, and uh, this is from the she's from the uh, University of the Düsseldorf, so Germany. So and uh, uh, I'd like to uh, briefly introduce the uh, uh, Stephanie. So Stephanie is uh, head the head of the Center for Advanced Imaging at uh, Düsseldorf University, and uh, she is a cell biologist by training. And uh, during uh, his uh, her career, she gradually. Uh, developed uh, into the uh, expert of the uh, image uh, co co facility management and uh, uh, people. So, and uh, uh, actually, so in 2011, so she started to establish the uh, uh, imaging facility at the University of Dusseldorf, that is a uh, center for advanced imaging. And uh, so since then, she is the head of the CA, uh, the Center and also uh, active, very active in the German Bioimaging Network, so which is now uh, became the German Society for Microscopy and Image Analysis. So and also uh, 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 since uh, this year, uh, she is the vice chair of the German Bioimaging. So uh, the, she is a senior expert in the imaging uh, core facility. So. Uh, so uh, Jason uh, said that uh, so uh, in uh, this uh, meeting, so we want to have a uh, um, the very uh, different, diverse uh, view of the this uh, main theme of the image data uh, pre publication, image data uh, uh, management and analysis. So we selected the uh, diverse uh, people uh, uh, from the different. Uh, Earlier. So, and she will be uh, one of the representative of the uh, academic uh, image core facility. And I hope that she will give us uh, uh, input from this uh, uh, perspective. So, uh, so I would like to pass the mic on to the Stephanie and please start if you are okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ichuichi. I will try to share my screen now. Um, let's go here. So, I hope you can see the slides. Yes. And hear perfect. me. Okay, perfect. So, thank you very much for the kind introduction. And as uh, Juichi told you, this is now another view on uh, image data pre processing and management. And that's the view of a core facility. And I'm sorry, I really have to take you back to everyday logistics now and all the problems we are struggling with. And um, of course, everybody of you is convinced that um, data or image data management is no end in itself. And it will help us to improve our science in the end um, at everyday work or interaction with the people using the facility um, I can tell you it's it's still hard work to convince all of these people that it's no end in itself. And I'm going to talk a little bit of, about these aspects. So um, my experience with image data management started in already in um, 2009 when I was looking around for an image data management tool. And my motivation then came from an EU research project uh, where we um, were involved in, um, yeah, in, in developing new di diagnostic tools. And at that time, in a hospital in Stockholm, patient samples were taken. And uh, these patient samples were sent to us to Düsseldorf, where we did the image, image acquisition. And we ourselves had to share those data with the image analysis people from Helsinki. And uh, because that time we had to organize a huge number of images in order to share those data, including all the metadata and annotations um, with an image analysis analyst. We were really looking for a tool to help us to do it. And at that time we decided to have Omero to install it in a local environment. 
and only for a single research project. And that worked very fine. So that was a great experience. And because we had a, a clear aim and a very clear benefit, we could share the data, we could um, uh, view, visualize the data easily and this, the OME team and the whole community was very supportive and is still com is supportive and that's why I'm still um, a fan of Omero. And of course, times go on and a career develops. So today, as mentioned, I'm head of an imaging core facility and we are still happy with Omero. This is why we have, of course, the Center for Advanced Imaging has, of course, an Omero server running for all the users of the facility. And um, because I thought, let's share our, com our experience with Omero with uh, local people around us. I initiated in 2017 an Omero user group in Germany to have something like a a more powerful subunit. So, I mean, the OME community is great and you can access anybody by just sending an email, but it's easier to, to share experience if you can easily meet in person. And this is what we do every yeah two to three months. Of course, uh, everything is interrupted in the moment, but I hope we can go on in the near future to, to meet again. And this is now for Josh, who is Josh Moore, who's al always also joining these meetings in Germany. So we have now this German subunit of Omero working. Um, so the powerful subunit of Omero users uh, joined with the German bioimaging workgroup number six, which is dedicated to image analysis and image um, management. And this um, help us to establish a, a network of, of sites um, doing image data management or planning to do it. So there are more and more core facilities and also research groups um, in Germany interested in, in setting the whole thing up. And uh, this is now very useful to, to have these two groups together to support those people. And from all these activities, um, we had the idea to go one step further. And this is now um, that we are preparing um, a proposal for information infrastructures for bioimage data. And it's in, still in preparation. We hope we can submit it soon. And this is called ISVD Bio. And as everybody, I guess, attending um, in this meeting here, we are also interested in developing standards for the management of bioimage data. And all these activities in, in really fostering um, the establishment of this bioimage data stuff is um, happening in a, in a bigger framework. And that's very similar to, to what uh, Claire reported yesterday is going on in, in the US and in Canada. Um, the same in Germany. We have several activities now here um, about research data management on national and also on, on local level. So, uh, on the national level, we have the NFDI initiative called the National Research Data Infrastructure. And the aim of the NFDI is really to systematically manage scientific and research data, provide long-term storage, backup, accessibility, so everything under the fair, um, fair conditions for, image, for, for data, to um, establish networks, um, of coordinated consortia and um, to provide science-driven data service for the research communities. Okay, and these are now the successful consortia of the first funding round in, and that they were announced in June 2020. And as you can see here, I will now activate my pointer. Da, da, da. Okay, here. Um, they are all around disciplines. So it's not one data type specific consortium available here. So there's no consortia for, for just date image data, for example, but they are all around uh, disciplines. For example, NFD for high health is dedicated to medicine. Uh, then there are the plant people, data plant, yeah, plant biology, and the NFDI for biodiversity in biology and they all of them will use data 
And for us now, for the bioimage data community, uh, the question is how we how, how we can interact with these um, national activities, and we are still trying to find out how we fit in there. Okay, so on the national level, uh, on the local level at our universities and institutions, uh, in many places, there's an establishment of RDM teams going on, and they are very often shared between IT departments and libraries. And um, what they are doing in many cases is that they try to identify um, pilot projects. And this is now a strong recommendation I can give to you. If you can become a pilot project, for example, by setting up Omero or something else for your research group or for your core facility, um, you might get, get more IT support from these from these teams. This is what we did, and you can see it here on the screenshot of our website, that we are listed as a pilot project for microscopy research data. And I have to say, yes, indeed, um, from that time on, we get a little bit, at least, um, more uh, IT support from our uh, computer services. Okay. But let's go back to what we are doing every day to the image data workflow, at least how it looks like um, in our core facility and in many other places as uh, reported yesterday. So every, everything at the moment starts with image acquisition and uh, at least in our place and I guess now in many other places, it is a standard that the data that are required do, are not locally stored in the systems PC, PC, but are directly delivered to a file store, a central file store, either locally or maybe somewhere in the cloud. I don't know. In our, in our case, we, we save it uh, directly to the computer service center in a file store. And from there, um, in the best case, uh, data are directly transferred to an image database. In our case, as I told you, it's, it's Omero. And from, from that point on, um, data are available for viewing and sharing. That's very handy, for example, in teaching or for collaborations, for publication. Yeah, if you are asked to, to put your data to a repository, this is a very good entry point to have your data already in an image database. Or as we learned today for analysis and processing could be, um, also a good entry point to have your data in Omero already. And these are the possible um, analysis pipelines introduced also yesterday, Fireflows, Galaxy, and also the repositories we have already, BioImage Archive, and, um, and added value databases like the IDR or Empire. Okay, so if everything runs like this, I would consider these data to be fair. But we are not yet there. So in our case, we are at least at this point here. But um, if somebody is asking me, OK, I did data acquisition, and now we have to put our image, images to, um, to a repository, we were asked by the journal to do so. I cannot um, in detail tell him what the data workflow should be. Um, and on that way, we are struggling, struggling with many, many details as we learned from all the talks before. For example, if you look to your local IT infrastructure, you would need network access. You have to discuss who will pay for the storage capacity. Um, we have to talk about data security. We have to talk about authentication, but because not, not everybody should have access to your data. Yeah? So, and what we found out in our local uh, work group and what we also recommend in our um, proposal um, is now, if you have limited IT support, you should really try to share any solution you found yourself with everybody even if it's the smallest problem, because that really can uh, prevent that people um, like doing um, image 
data management on, and, and they will discuss why they will never touch it again. Um, and this is really um, uh, annoying if, if you really have to fight for these small problems and everybody, everything is crashing because of that. And what we also want to do is to develop very detailed protocols of these steps that have to be fulfilled to, to, to get this workflow um, running. And we, we will share this with any, any IT department that's interested. Okay. Um, so the next thing is about metadata and ontologies. And um, here on international level, we know um, that people are really fighting for having high quality and complete metadata sets, what's very uh, useful in the end. Of course, quality control standards would be great and many people are working on that. And as we learned just uh, before, uh, there will be new data formats and that will be also very important. So, but um, I mean, if you are just a core facility and you, you think you, you look at all these tables of, of complete metadata sets, you think, okay, what should I, what should I do next? And uh, to get things started, um, what we did is we, we tried to agree on minimal data, metadata sets. And what is of course also very important is to pro provide user-friendly tools like the Omero MDE tool that was developed from Susanne Kunis in, in Osnabrück to make it as easy as possible for users to, to annotate their data. Okay. So um, for viewing and sharing and publishing your work, you have to, doc to, to have data sharing policies. And there, and that was also mentioned yesterday, we would really need more support from the funding agencies because some people still do not understand that they, they really have to share their data and that's not really their data because uh, they got public funding for this. And um, yeah, we should raise the awareness of the benefits of data sharing. That's still another very important point. Um, and again, to get started here, at least agree on minimal data policies and try to include your local RDM team because they might have already some tools or some um, templates for the data policies and that can be very helpful because also univers universities and institutions are aware that something has to happen in this direction. Okay, if it goes comes to the analysis pipelines, I really have to say we, we have to promote these tools that they are around and that really people stop, um, for example, counting nuclei by eye, that's still happening. Yeah? And on the other hand, you have these deep learning tools. It's incredible, but that's the reality. So, and what I think is, is really um, promising is that we, and we heard about this yesterday, that we can integrate image data with other data types for analysis. And I'm really looking forward to, to hear more about these things. Um, for the repositories here, the point is, as I told you, um, the, or the most important question is how to get there. If I have my data here in the, in the database, in my site, how do I get uh, my, my data delivered to the repositories. And there we, we really have to work on workflows and, and get in contact with people from Bioimage Archive and that we agree on, on interfaces and on standards and what's, what are the, the, the steps we have to, to go. And on the other hand, um, oh, sorry. So um, the question is really how it develops in the future. So what will be the landscape of re repositories, I would call it? Will there be just one international repository like a bioimage archive for all image, bioimage data? Or will there be national entities uh, maybe triggered like this national initiatives like the NFDI or something where else? I don't know. So and that will be um, they are very important for us and we really have to, to keep an eye on that development. Okay. Oops. So, but um, this is about all the technical infrastructure. And what I would like to emphasize in my talk is that we should not forget about the people 
our users, our colleagues, the other researchers from all the research group. Um, so they really have to, to understand why image data management is important and what are the benefits. And um, if, if the workflows we present to them um, are not working properly, then they will try to avoid it. This is what I can tell you definitely. Yeah. So um, we know that it's no end in itself and we really have to convince those people that um, there's a, a real benefit for doing it. Because otherwise, um, especially if you are the guy from the facility, yeah. I mean, people have to, to pay for, for using your microscope, yeah. And on top, they have to now to annotate your, their data and to put it to another database. Yeah, it's just another layer of bureaucracy if they do not understand why they are doing it. And um, the the PIs and the research group leaders um, have the tendency to keep their data with themselves. Yeah, on their hard drive. So why should I share my data? They think, okay, if I if I give it away, I will somebody will take it and 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 publish and whatever. So, and the funny thing is sometimes they, they think um, putting the data to, to a file server is already something like data sharing. And uh, the funding agencies, so, and that was mentioned already yesterday, they ask why should we fund data storage? That is, is basic equipment. Why is it needed? Yeah. And it was mentioned how many storage space you, you need if you really go for proper image analysis of, of large data sets. So and this is the question behind. So what do we gain from image data management? And this is what we have to really show to people and we have to, to teach them yeah, that they see what are the benefits um, from this. Okay, so teaching means we should explain uh, not only how to do it, but also what for. So we should really try to, to collect to like collect good examples for sophisticated image analysis as they were presented just today, yeah? just a few minutes before me. So, and then um, that you have the possibility to, to really to do data mining with your imaging data and um, that people can get new ideas and um, really to bring this sophisticated image analysis tools closer to image acquisition and to people that acquire images and also to foster the integration of, of other data types. And um, so what we, we did have to do is to provide good workflows that really work. So because then we will improve the quality standards and by that also the reliability of image data and reproducibility. And um, what um, is really now I guess getting more and more important is that we should reach out not only to the researchers working in their projects already, but also to the students. So they should get in touch with research image data management as early as possible. Because if they start early, these are the people that will request um, proper image data management themselves. That's my experience. If we do teach, um, in our master courses, we uh, normally introduce Omeru as the standard tool for sharing imaging data. And in the end, they cannot imagine to, to work without Omeru. And that's really the, the right development. And, and those people, if they go to the research groups and um, try uh, start working there, they will definitely request those tools and they will bring, um, yeah, will bring this kind of, of research data management, image data management to the labs in the end. Um, so, and with this, maybe we can um, establish something that I would, call, I would call an image data workflow 2.0. And maybe that starts now with, um, with the researcher that is uh, maybe not directly running to the next microscope where he has to pay for, doing, for using it, but maybe he wants to look to the repository first or to our added value databases, what's available there. And then rethinking and replanning the, the experiment he wants he or she wants to do, and then going back to the to the microscope. Then all the data go into the imagement image data management system, I would call it, and then 
they go to analysis and maybe will be compared again with data that are already available. So that's my vision of, of a new image data workflow in the end. So, and with this, I would like to show, to share with you one nice example for the image data management during the pandemic, the pandemic situation. So we had to do teaching in home office, office and this is what we did, of course. We had a, a microscopy course and in the end we had to analyze our data and that was only possible I have to say by having a, a tool around already, and that was Omero in this case, of course. And there we could do our FET acceptor photo beaching analysis, including Excel sheets and then including all the beautiful um, data sets we took. And in the end, it was the same result as um, teaching in person. And that was a great experience. And with this, I would like to close my talk and thank you for your attention. And I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much. So that is a very uh, thoughtful um, and careful uh, presentation. So I'm really <coughs> impressed about that. So uh, the, there is a several <coughs> question. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, yeah. Andre, so that, uh, can you show up, Andre? Do you, uh, how do you feel? Uh, yeah, handling the the responsible for the other users' data. So and then yeah, if you are okay to show up, but anyway, so this is a question. So okay. So I will repeat, and how do you feel in your experience as a core facility manager feel about the being responsible for users' data? So that is uh, his, his or her question. Yeah, indeed, it's a hard question. Um, so um, in case of, of putting the, the um, data to our file server, so it's just a storage place for image data, um, the responsibility goes to our computer service center and they guarantee backup and everything. In case of Omero, it's different because it's like still like pilot project. Uh, it's that we inform people that um, they can put the data there, but they are, uh, so they won't be secure. So we, we do not take responsibility for data that go to Omero. This will change maybe one day, but at the moment it's still in this stage. That's, so we, um, maybe it's not the end of the story, the overall, overall thing about responsibility for data, but it's at the moment, it's like that. So if you go to Omero, it, you take your responsibility for the data. It's not us. Okay, thank you. And the question from Yam. So can you show up? Yam, Ehrenberg? Yeah. Yes, I think that's working. Thanks a lot, Stephanie. That was really great and, and very clear. So I, I especially liked your vision 2.0, where people, before they even start taking new data, they first check the available data in terms of planning. Is it still needed, the new data, and also how to acquire it and how to analyze it? So if you would want to do that in your facility, what do you think is actually most critically missing today? It's... it's um the whole IT thing. So if people should have access to, to those um, databases. They, I mean, it, it, as I said, it's the small things. Yeah, we work with sub network, sub networks of, of each group, and if they don't have um, access from there to to the things that we offer, it's already a problem. Yeah, and then it's it's really about um, having one IT person around all the time helping to solve those problems. And as I mentioned, I mean, if people don't know that what is available, how should they get these ideas? So it's it's also teaching, yeah. And it's getting more and more important in in my mind. In my, so what I think, what my experience is. And as I told you, if if students have a had a first contact very early to this kind of tools, they will incorporate it in their daily work. If not, it's really hard to get there. So that's it. Yeah, IT support and education. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, a uh, question from the, uh, George Jara from Chile. So can you show up? 
yeah. Audio only for now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Stephanie, for the for the talk. Uh, I have a question regarding this. Uh, the, the process that is being conducted somehow between basic science and applied applied science. Uh, in my experience here in Chile for biomedical imaging, we have these two worlds and we're just starting to figure out how to make them kind of coordinately work, which it, I, I don't know if they're experienced in some, some regards because there are some workflows that are kind of similar, but medical imaging, it's, it's uh, it's an entire different ballpark sometimes from medical bio bioimaging in general. So, um, I mean, I have to say, in our environment, we, of course, never are in contact with any, yeah, it's, it's this patient data thing, yeah? So if it comes to patient data, then, of course, it's, it's, a, it's a closed world and we don't have access. It's, it's very complicated about sharing and so on. So, um, People come with their research questions with, uh, yeah, not from patient data, but from normal research they are doing in the lab. So that's the only contact we have. So, but we are not involved at all in, in this really medical imaging field. And I have to say also from our experience with this NFDI initiative in Germany, when uh, we tried to, to get in contact, to, to communicate with those people, they were really really um, like, okay, no, we, we cannot imagine to, to come together in this point. Maybe technically, yes, but um, the first impulse was to, to prevent um, opening also for, for, or for, for uh, communicating, collaborating with us. So that's, that's very difficult still, I guess. So, <clears throat> thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. So there is more question, but uh, it's already past the time. So I stop here. So maybe so you continue the discussion with the uh, chat or other uh, means. So thank you very much, Stephanie. It's a great talk and uh, so very deeply uh, described the uh, problem. So thank you very much.